Hello. Yes. Um, there is this concept uh, that comes from the field of learning uh, known as communities of practice. And if you want to know more about it from a more uh, detailed academic perspective, if you just search communities of practice, um, you'll get some results. If you use Google Scholar, you'll get kind of better results. Um, but this is an idea that's kind of been in academia for a few decades now. I'm pretty sure it's from the 90s. Um, but we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of things. That point of the idea of communities of practice is simply that in this world, there exist groups of people who have a shared interest and who uh, engage in this interest or, or passion together. And by doing so, they're able to engage in their practice and learn in a more effective way than they otherwise would on their own. This probably sounds pretty obvious. Um, I kind of hope that it would because uh, hopefully most of us have had experiences like that in be before in the past where we were doing something uh, with other people and all of us kind of got better because we were all doing the same thing. You know, like when you and your friends pick up a new game all at the same time, that's co-op or multiplayer, and you all play together and you all improve together. <clears throat> um, but as, as obvious as this is, I think it's still easy to forget that um, learning happens best in a community. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why this is the case, um, like a ton, and I'll just list a couple so for one, when you make mistakes, you learn from them if you're intentional. But if you and a lot of other people make mistakes, you're able to learn from a lot more mistakes than just the ones that you are going to be able to make. And if you start making a mistake, maybe somebody else has already made that mistake before. Additionally, learning is a very emotional experience. And a lot of things that make learning hard are not because the actual things you need to do are difficult, but because emotionally they're difficult. I don't know if that distinction quite makes sense, but a good example would just be motivation or, or wanting to do something. Some stuff bums us out or we kind of drag our feet on. If you're in a community with other people, it's a lot easier to have situations where you feel motivated for whatever reason. Maybe it's competition. Maybe it's just showing up and seeing others. Um, and you can also feel supported when, you know, you're feeling down or get momentum going when you're feeling up. People, humans, we're social creatures. We like being around other people. And that aspect can soften the emotional struggles of learning. I could go on. But my point is, if you seriously want to learn something, you should seriously consider figuring out what the relevant community of practice is for that thing. Um, and that's a lot easier said than done, especially when you're an adult and you're not in school anymore. Because a lot of the things that where communities of practice exist uh, um, are organized very systematically, institutionally through school, whether it's, you know, K through 12 or, or university. Um, that's mostly what I wanted to say is just, if you want to learn something, if you really do find a community and the irony is that I am alone <laughs> skating and I have not done that. And maybe that's because I haven't decided to commit super hard to skating yet. But if I do seriously want to get a lot better at skating, then I'm going to need to start going to a skate park that's not empty, uh, and making friends and skating with other people, because that's how I'm going to learn best. That's all. Bye.